Hi everyone, it's Casey. Today I have a package opening video for you and it's been a long time since I received a doll, but the circumstances are a little special on this one, so I'm just gonna tell you. Um, I was messaging Cheryl of Spooky Kids Workshop on Etsy. I was actually messaging her about Blythe vs. Blythe. I'm a huge fan of her dolls and was hoping she might consider being one of the artists to compete. Um, we ended up having a conversation through that. She declined participating, but offered to trade a faceplate of hers for eye chips. This was a perfect trade for me, um, and I'm so excited because this is really going to be my first Blythe doll by an artist other than myself. And like I said, I'm a huge fan of hers. She let me choose, and um, she had a doll listed in her shop at that moment that I just adored and she actually let me choose that one so I sent off her eye chip she sent off the face plates so what happens is Cheryl sells a lot of just face plates so she sells the front and back of the the doll and sort of at a, a lower price than it would be to get the whole doll and then you can buy the hair that you want and the body. So I do have a body on the way. Um, I will show you a picture here of the doll as she had it completed and I really loved its look. So I actually have some mohair here that I'm gonna see if I can sort of replicate the look that she kind of had for the doll. Otherwise I might order a wig or something. So here is the card that she sent and it's called Spooky Kid. So her dolls aren't always spooky. Um, sometimes they are but uh, a lot of times they're just they're just really cool so let's look let's open it up and I'm going to probably complete this video after the body arrives and I kind of come up with how I'm gonna do the hair because I'm going to also need a dome and I'm gonna see what I have here that I might be able to use to complete the doll so the back plate is just a regular back plate. It doesn't look like any work has been done to it, which is fine. Not all artists do something with the back plate. I always sand it and sort of shade the ears, but it's usually hidden by the hair, so it really doesn't, doesn't matter. The face plate is the important part. So let's take a look at her. These scissors are not good. And here she is. She is super cute and super well done. I can't wait to put her together. So uh, give me some time to collect the supplies to put her together and we will do that together. I will be right back. Hi everyone. So it's been a few days since I got my Spooky Kids Workshop faceplate in the mail. And I gathered some supplies to finish her. So I have a body here that actually had a broken foot, which is fine because it will work well as a doll for me to keep. I took a dome from a doll that I plan to do a reroute on. I haven't started the reroute and because they take so long, it's not really going to matter. Um, I can always get another one down the road. I took an eye mechanism from another doll I had that matched the skin tone a little better and I've already painted the eyelids um, and sealed them. I ordered some very light colored blonde eyelashes to go with the hair that I'm hoping to use. And I picked out some new eye chips for the doll and a couple of them are gonna need to be glued in because they're not staying. Um, but I haven't glued them yet because I wanna make sure once I put her together that they're the eyes I want. Um, otherwise, they're harder to get out once they're glued. So I'm going to go ahead and put the doll together now, and I thought you guys might like to come along and watch.
I'm going to want to put the eyelashes on and I'm going to glue in the eye chips that aren't staying. And then I'm going to prepare to show you how I'm planning on doing the hair. So it's also getting very dark outside right now. It's the middle of the day, but it is our dark days here in Oregon. So I'm not sure how well you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and take a break here and prepare the rest, pull out some clothes for her. And then I'll come back and show you the rest of putting her together. So I've got all her eye chips in and glued, and I glued on her eyelashes also. So, and I also looked through my clothes and I didn't really find anything that I liked. Um, I wanna put her in sort of a vintage, shabby, chic kind of look, and the only dress I have like that is this one. And because she's on a small body, it's just really, really too big. Even though I really like the colors and the look, it's just too big. And I'm not going to be able to make it work. So I'm actually thinking about modifying a very simple dress that I have. And maybe staining it and adding some embellishments. So I might show you that in another video. But the, the important part um, that I'm at now with this doll is that... I am going to try to make a wig for her out of this scrap of mohair that I have. So this is mohair that's actually on the hide. Um, and it's possible to sew it to fabric, but of course she doesn't have any fabric on her head. And I really don't want to glue it because I feel like um, that will make a big permanent mess. And if it doesn't look good, it will make big mess. So I'm going to try a technique that I have seen online but have not tried myself and that is to make a wig cap out of fabric. So I have this fabric that's sort of a skin tone color. It's also really close to the color of the hair which will be helpful. And what I've read is that you put it over the head and then you put a rubber band around it to hold it and then we're just going to adjust it and pull out all the um, creases of the fabric and then we're going to put glue all over the top and let it dry and then it will be in the shape of the head and we should be able to sew the mohair to it. So I'm going to take a little bit of time here to adjust this and get all the creases out. sure what glue they, um, they use online. It looks a lot like an Elmer's glue, so I'm going to go ahead and just use that. I don't know why it wouldn't work. And it's such a gentle glue that if there's any mistakes, we should be able to fix them. So I'm just going to put the glue all around and I have a brush here to brush it on. And the way that it looks online is you need quite a bit of glue. So we're probably gonna need a lot more than that, but let's start with that and see. Okay, so it's been overnight since I put the glue on the fabric. And I thought that it would probably dry quickly, but it didn't. It was very wet still last night, so I left it overnight. And we're gonna take it off and see how it worked. Um, and while I was waiting for it to dry, I put some beads on her pull strings and I worked on an outfit for her. So I made these leggings and I let out the seam in the bottom and I added some fringe and a bow and some buttons and then I tea stained it so that it would look kind of vintage. I also made her an undershirt and I have these shoes here. So I'm really excited how she looks and I can't wait to get her hair on. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is take off the rubber band and I'm not sure if I need to do the glue process again. As I said, this is my first time making a wig cap like this, so I really don't know what I'm doing. 
but from what I can tell from seeing some videos is you peel it off and it has stuck to the head a little bit. So we're gonna peel it off and push it back the way that it's supposed to be. And so now you have this kind of firm <coughs> wig cap, basically, that's the exact shape of the head. So we're gonna cut off the excess fabric around where it's stiff from the glue. And then the idea is, um, most people, doll makers that make these types of wigs, then sew on wefts of uh, mohair or wool that they've made. But I'm going to try to sew this piece of mohair that I have just directly on there. So I want to get it pretty nice looking. I don't think it's going to show, but. So now you can see it's pretty stiff. It's not super stiff. Um, and it should fit right on her head, just like that. So it's not gonna stay on without something kind of sticky. So I will have to put some sticky on, I'm assuming. And what I wanna do is sew this right up to the edge there. And then I'm gonna have to cut little pieces so that it will turn around. I think so I'm just gonna go ahead and do what I can and I'll show you the end result. So let's work on that a little bit. Okay, so it was actually really simple to sew um, the mohair piece onto the wig cap. However, because the mohair is so thick on this um, backing, it doesn't fit, well, it fits on her head, but it's not gonna stay and it's gonna show that ugly seam. So I'm trying to decide now what I wanna do. I'd like to just hide the seam right underneath uh, the front of her faceplate, but I'm trying to figure out the best way to hold it there. So I'm gonna try with some sticky tack and see if I can get it down in there. And if not, I may end up gluing it. So let me try a couple things and I'll be back and show you what worked out. Okay, everyone, so I attached her uh, the wig that I ended up making was sticky tack and it worked really well. It's not perfect. I probably wouldn't sell a doll like this, um, but I like the fact that I would be able to change it if I end up not liking it. And I put her hair in pigtails and I think she looks adorable. I also found this hat that I had that I really like on her. It's almost the same color as her hair, which I kind of think looks cool. So um, it's a little bunny hat and I'm going to probably put that on her and take some photos so that you can see her a little bit up close. But I'm really, really thrilled with how she came out. She's exactly what I envisioned. Um, so I'm going to take a few pictures and, and I hope you enjoy seeing her. Thank you so much for watching.